Mothers who stay at home with their kids say people assume they're lazy women who use their kids as an excuse. Mothers who work say they're accused of being selfish parents who care more about making a buck. Up next, local moms square off on motherhood in the 90s. Northwest afternoon. Newsweek magazine called it Mommy Wars. The women who choose to stay at home with their children squaring off against those who leave their children to work outside the home. It seems there is some measure of guilt and self-doubt for women on both sides of this question. This is Dana Finch. Dana stays home with her children and resents those who assume that all women like her do is sit around the house and watch TV. Sonia Accord has two-year-old twins and works outside the home. She feels the notion that she's missing the important moments in her children's lives is just not valid. Jeannie Crump is also with us today. Jeannie gave up a sales career to stay at home with her kids. She says it also feels like she gave up power and certainly validation. That the adjustment was a difficult one for her. And finally, Susie, Susie Lingenfelder is here with us, and uh, she's a working mom with an eight-month-old daughter. She says the guilt she is feeling sometimes gets almost overwhelming. And on the phone with us is Dr. Brenda Hunter, a psychologist who, after tasting life as a single working mother, has now chosen to stay at home. In her book, which is called Home by Choice, Dr. Hunter contends that moms working outside the home have a harmful impact on their children. Please welcome all our guests. Dr. Hunter, let me begin, if I may, with you, because uh, I suspect there's going to be a, a, an interesting reaction or two to your contention in your book. Tell us exactly what your feelings are about the impact on children when the mothers are working outside the home. Well, I believe that most parents want what's best for their children, yet for the past 25 years, we focused on what's best for mother, and data are rolling in that indicate that children do not fare well in mother's absence. First, consider babies. What's at risk is nothing less than the emotional security of the child, that sense of belonging. In fact, key infant daycare studies since 1980 show that if mother works more than 20 hours per week during her baby's first year, her baby is at risk for behavioral and emotional problems later on. Uh, in fact, researchers have found that insecure attachment uh, during that first year of life, at, when these children get to be four, five, and six years old, they may be very aggressive and disobedient or very passive and withdrawn. We, we will come back, certainly, Dr. Hunter, and, and uh, you know, explore some of the research that you have looked at very carefully. Uh, but let's get a reaction, if we may, from some of the women who have joined us here on the set. Sonia, maybe you could begin and it sounds like I'm hearing Dr. Hunter say that long range, there could be some deleterious effects on children if mom is gone working. How, how does that strike you? I think she's right, sure. There could be some deleterious effects on children if moms stay home. It just depends on if you're a good mom or a bad mom or a good dad or a bad dad. Mm -hmm. It just all depends. If someone could give to me something concrete, something that guarantees if I stay home, my children will be 4.0 students, they'll never get in trouble, um, I'll be happy, my mental health will be just fine, then I'd stay home. But there's nothing on paper that says that, and uh, so I just, I appreciate and I respect her opinion, but... Uh, but I assume at the same time you're comfortable then that even though you work outside the home, you can give your children all you feel they need in terms of nurturing... That they and, won't and, be emotionally traumatized. Yeah. Absolutely. My experience, my personal experience is from my own mother who has worked since I can remember and is still working, is currently working on her PhD um, through the University of Minnesota, and she's a full professor at Washington State University out at Puyallup Research Center. That is my role model. Uh, I have a lot of respect for my mother. All of us, the children in, in this, my particular family, have turned out just fine. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some traumatic problems, not like not getting a date on time for a dance, but that's about as traumatic as it got. <laughs> so. Why did you choose to go to work? As opposed to staying home and working at home, because we don't want to say working moms are the only ones who work here. That's the right. moms at home are working too. That's right. Uh, it's two kinds of work, or all together. I still work at home, of course, with my twins. I guess I can I can address that question by saying, let all of you have a set of twins, and let's see how well you do. <laughs> um, after eight weeks, after they were born, at being at home, I was breaking down that door to get back to work. 
because I just, that's not me. I'm, I'm not made up that way. That's not how I was raised. I was raised with a working mother. Okay. My role model was not one with Flintstone and mm -hmm. whatever. And we have a phone so. call on the line. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that I've done it both ways. I have a two-year-old, and I went back to work a few months after I had him and worked for about six or seven months, and he was in daycare, and he kept getting sick, constantly exposed to germs and stuff. And so I was finally guilty because I'd be at work, and they'd call me and say that he was sick, and I'd have to come get him and take him home, and then I'd be at home, and I'd feel like I should be at work. And it got to the point where he was spending so much time at the doctors that I just quit and stayed home. And I've been home now with him for a year. Mm -hmm. And I feel guilty because we never have enough money. Yeah. And, you know, people are always saying, well, you should do this part-time or you should do that part-time. And mm -hmm. I get stressed out sometimes being here with him all the time. But he's happy and he's totally healthy. He's had one cold now in the last year. And, you know, there's never enough money because so, so, when you but, work, it costs money and there's never enough, you know, to go around anyway. It's but just, the, the bottom line, it seems to me, is that you've tried it both ways and neither way was perfect. It's, it's a no-win <laughs> situation, but, you know, you do what you can. You do right. whatever's yeah. going to be best for your kids as far as you can see, and mm -hmm. hopefully it'll all work out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your call. Sure. Bye-bye. you chose to stay home. Why is that? Well, with it, it wouldn't pay me to work um, after I had my second child. And um, I thought, well, I would just, I remember telling my mom one day, I can't imagine myself never, never um, working. And then after my second child was born, I realized that this was my place. I never, ever, I mean, I, I'll have to admit, there's times when I think to myself, you know, geez, I wish I could go to work. I have four children. Um, but I just really feel like that's my place. My mom stayed home with me. I loved having her home. I loved that sense of security. If you have four and children, I, I suspect you have plenty of work. I do, I, would say I do. So. <laughs> but I remember that sense of security that she was there when I needed her, and I want that same thing for my kids. I want to be involved in their school, and I don't think I can do that if I work too. Jeannie, you stay home too, home. and do you feel you are cast in a different light by society because you choose to stay home? I, uh, the, the rewards are different, you know, there's no monetary, uh, which admittedly I do miss. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, this, there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> it's nice having the money, but the rewards for me now are in, are in different areas. My children uh, out of the blue will say something, you know, mommy, I love you, whatever. Those rewards, being home. Uh, but do other women look at you differently? Absolutely. In what Absolutely. way? How do they look coming, at coming from being a territory manager of a national company. I had people that worked for me. And I am home, and I am dealing with diapers and all the issues in the home, small children, tantrums. Um, I, I can't just say, do this, and they do it. They argue with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of stresses, it's a different, it's a different ball game. But, uh, so it's an illusion to, to, to presume that staying home is going to mean perfect children. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Guilt, going back to work, Susie? Guilt, going back to work. Yeah, how, how do you deal with it? <laughs> not very well. <laughs> not, what do you feel well guilty about, too? I feel guilty because well, I enjoy my job. I love to work. It's very demanding, many hours. Uh, my husband is terrific and takes care of the daughter most of the time. Um, shortly after going back to work, uh, approximately three months after our daycare was closed due to child abuse. Mm -hmm. Not in the daycare, however, uh, they did abuse their own children. Oh, uh, that must have made you feel terrible. I spent three months looking for a new daycare. She was in a temporary daycare in between. I cry when I drop her off at daycare now. Probably didn't I'm help the guilt situation. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And my job is still equally as demanding. I work approximately 10 to 12 hours a day. I travel. Uh, there's times I've worked 16 hour shifts and not seen her. So this is a major emotional toll on you. If it's you're crying really every like time you drop your child off? It's, it's rough and like I said, I'm late for work because I can't say goodbye. So you're suffering in both departments. Yeah. And she's having a hard time saying goodbye in the morning too. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a quick break. All these moms say they felt some pressure to work. Up next, we're going to meet a mom who finally succumbed to that pressure and now feels the pressure on her is more intense than ever. We'll be right back.
Thank you. Welcome back. Are you a working mom who wishes you had more time to spend with your children, or do you stay home with your kids and feel that awful pressure to be back working and making money? That's the uh, Real issue. Struggle. We're, it is a struggle. We're mm -hmm. exploring that today. Tracy in the audience has a question or comment. Go ahead, Tracy. Well, the comment that I have is that I'm in a situation where I'm a single mom, the sole support for my children. I don't have a choice. I have to work. And yet, because of health reasons, it makes, me, it, makes it difficult for me to work. The stress um, of my job, as well as just the pressures of being a single mom. I've been on a leave of absence since June. Um, and now, as I'm I literally at a point where I have to go back to work, it's hard to decide what type of job I should go back to. I would much rather stay home with my children, but obviously I can't. Of course, in, in the role of a single mom, it leaves you, as you have said yourself, with fewer options because you're the sole source of support. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, somebody's case up here, I think it was you, Jeannie, who said you missed the money for a while but finally made the adjustment. Now, Tracy can't do that. Mm -hmm. let's, let's turn to Dr. Hunter because, Dr. Hunter, you feel that a lot of women are, feel pressured to have to work, don't you? Uh, let me just say that I, I have talked to a lot of single mothers. The title of my book is Home by Choice. Some women, obviously, do not have a choice. But I've talked to a number of single mothers who are coming home. There's a trend for mothers to come home. In fact, in 1990, the percentage of women in the labor force dropped for the first time since 1948. And they're coming home because of what's happening to their kids. We have a high rate of teen pregnancy. The suicide rate has tripled since 1960 for teenagers, drug abuse, kids without a conscience. We know that violence is rocketing in this country, and lots of moms, either single or married, are choosing to take some time off from their careers to devote to their families. Can we really say mom is going to make the difference in that, Sonia? Absolutely. Yes. And in answer to your first uh, guest, I would say if she would go to the libraries and look at the psychological research on paper, she would find that there is excellent research out there. And I testified to a presidential commission a few weeks ago on the assignment of women in the military. Uh, people are very concerned about what's happening to kids in this country. And it's really a myth that if a woman <clears throat> takes time off from her career, that she's all washed up professionally. Because the studies show that women can take between 5 and 20 years off and still go back to the workforce and still have a very fulfilling career. Sonia, what's your reaction? I, I see you get Nancy about what she's saying. I, just, I don't understand why mothers are blamed for the way society is, or way, the way the children are turning out. There is another person involved in this whole thing, and that is the father. I have a very good husband. When I was, when I was growing up, I was raised by a single, very strong woman. And another point I want to make it has to do with culturally. Now, African Americans were brought here to work. Here it is, 1992. We don't have the, sta the slave mentality anymore. But we do have a work ethic that has been passed down from generation to generation, and that is nothing is given to you. You take care of yourself. You take care of your children. You work for what you have, and that, that's my work ethic. And your, your comment so. about your husband was obviously well received here. <laughs> right. uh, Susie mentioned yeah. it as well, that her husband takes up some of the slack, right. even though it still leaves you feeling guilty. Uh, Lisette Pratt is in our audience. You also work outside the home. What are your thoughts on what the impact is on your kids? Well, I, I'm another one that has a really excellent husband who really participates. And I told him that, you know, my career is very important to me. And he says, oh, that's okay. I'll help. I'll help. And I thought, hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he does. He really does. So I had an opportunity to do 12-hour shifts. And I work 12 hours Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I'm home Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And when Keith works, he works 10 hours a day. And he picks up the days then I'm not there. So she's really n not without a parent. But she gets something that I never had because I was raised by a single parent. And she has a dad that really cares mm -hmm. about her and is very interested in her. And mm -hmm. when she falls down and has an owie, oh, dad, I, I need you. And, and it's not mommy, mommy, but what about she, What about the damage, though? Do you think you're damaging your child by even by working part time? 
Not at all. Actually, I work 72 hours a week. I just cram it all in three days. So it, it also well. sounds, both from the way you describe your work schedule and the way you describe your marriage, that you have achieved a nice kind of balance. We really, we really have. And the one thing that my daughter knows, she's been to my job before and she's seen what I do and she likes the people I work with and she likes some of our consumers. So she, she knows what, what I'm doing is a good thing and I think she knows I care about what I do. And I'm really proud to have a job and I want her to be proud of wanting to get out there and be a career woman herself. Mm -hmm. Is the damage, Dr. Hunter, more common when uh, a woman is working 40 hours a week or 50 and comes home and is just too tired to give her children any quality time and attention? Well, you know, I think survey data indicates that part-time employment is best for mother and best for children as well. Uh, working 40 to 50 hours a week, uh, according to one famous psychologist, isn't good for mother any more than it's good for children. Um, I think what we've lost in this culture is a sense that children need a lot of sophisticated one-on-one -on -one nurture uh, in order to develop well into themselves. And I think fathering is extremely important. But I've been a therapist, and when I see adults come into my office, they may have what I call mother yearning and or father hunger. Mothers can't be fathers, and fathers cannot be mothers. Okay, we'll, we'll take a short uh, pause on that note. Uh, now, Jeannie gave up a managerial job in order to stay at home with her kids. In a moment, she's going to tell us about some of the unsympathetic attitudes she has encountered since she made that choice. We'll be back. Welcome back to Northwest Afternoon. Today we're talking about moms who work at home and moms who work outside of the home and moms who are juggling just about <laughs> everything they can get their hands on, I'd say. We have a phone call. Hello, call you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I, I really empathize with the people that have to work. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a stay-at-home mother for two years now. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, my husband works very hard so we can have this benefit, I guess you would call it. Um, the thing that gets me the most about this situation is when you are a stay-at-home mother, people make you feel like you're a minority. How do they do that? Um, I guess, in a sense, they kind of look down on you. Mm -hmm. You can be college-educated, you can be a career-minded woman, like this woman, or the women up there now. Mm -hmm. When you choose to stay home, it's kind of like people look down on you like the only thing you're capable of doing is changing diapers and burping babies when in fact you're doing all that plus the laundry plus cooking for husbands planning school trips planning everything mm -hmm. and even simple little things when you have conversations well you're only a mother mm -hmm. you know you you have no background on this whatsoever what, what a terrible phrase huh? you're only a mother <laughs> uh, and you know the, the women who are here have, have experienced that as well is it things people say Janie do they actually make um, comments or well the situations that come to my mind are, are uh, say with my husband's business functions that I'll meet someone for the first time and they'll say so what do you do and I stumble just for a second now mm -hmm. I don't anymore at all but mm -hmm. there was a time when I was like what do I do? Now I say I, I work in the home, I'm a mother, I have two children, seven and two, um, and I choose to be home. This is what I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm very good at it. Right. <laughs> do you feel like um, that wasn't proud, a good enough answer? But there was a time when it was not a comfortable situation and I, I was not at ease saying what I did. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, in fact, I gave myself a raise. I am not a domestic engineer. I'm a domestic goddess. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's Last great. year, it was official. I'm a, <laughs> promoted. Yeah. Now, Dana, this has happened with you, too. Didn't you bring lunch to your husband one time? Tell us about that. Well, I brought lunch to my husband and the girl who took my job after I left because I had another child said to me, well, one of the other fellows in the office said, gee, I wish that you, some of this would rub off on my wife. And the gal that took my job says, well, your wife works, Dana doesn't. She has nothing better to do but to stay home or bring her husband her lunch, Just his slugger. lunch. Just slugger? I said, you listen here, I've had your job and I've had my job and my job's a whole lot harder than that job and I wish that I had your job some days. Mm -hmm. Because my job is always, I mean, there is always a demand from a little person. Mm -hmm. Not someone older that you can say, just wait a minute, but I have to be on call 24 hours a day. So, um, plus she, by being home, I think you're supporting 
your husband's career. You're managing the home and keeping that smooth so he in turn can go out and manage his career and hopefully go forth and right. make, make more money and make things flow better and get the children out the door and all those good things we all hope to achieve. Do you, you know, think that's improve what we want yourself more so than somebody who works outside the home, would you say? Uh, I personally am I, I personally am better now than I was 10 years ago. I know that for a fact. I, I've become involved in my church. I've become involved in an athletic club. Um, I didn't do that because I didn't have time when I was working. Mm -hmm. Now I choose to do that, and I, I am physically and emotionally, I think, better than I was. So if that answers your question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cecile Anders is in our audience, and uh, Cecile lectures at the Bellevue Community College on, on the topic of that keyword balance. Is it true, do you think, Cecile, that women on both sides of this issue perhaps are not getting the societal support that they ought to be getting? We're getting nothing from the workplace, and we're working more and more hours. I mean, it affects the whole family. It's not just women. And we don't. We work longer hours than we used to. We lo work longer hours than other countries. And so it's really, we all try to have this individual solution, but we really have to work to change what's going on out there. And also with Dr. Hunter, with her quoting her research, unfortunately you can prove almost anything and there are a lot of studies that say that when the mother is happy, the child is happy. Mm -hmm. And we each That's have right. to work that out mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need help from society and from the workplace. But if anyone reads Faludi's Backlash to talk about how our thinking can be manipulated mm -hmm. and we each have to make the individual decision and we need help and so some of the things we do in our classes is how do you think through what you really need what's good for you and your child because if you're miserable you usually can't hide it and I really do think we've got to bring the fathers into the picture some women are single but we can't just talk about women going back home. Shouldn't fathers be able to take time off and stay at home and take care of their children? There's a lot of research showing that that benefits kids and families. But a moment ago it sounded like you could have been describing Sonia because you, uh, obviously from your attitude toward it, find happiness in your work and I suspect you take that home to your children, to your twins. I Gosh, I, I don't mean to be a pill on this panel, but I'm deliriously happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I were at home, I, I, I know me well enough where I would get fatter. I would not be involved. She, Jeannie, I believe, said that she's involved in athletic clubs and whatever. Mm -hmm. Since I've been working, I started a music ministry. Um, I'm involved working with Union Gospel Mission. I'm heavily involved in my church. I have this full-time job. I have a ball. I have people who help me. My mother helps me. I have a sister who works full time in management at Red Robin. She has two days off. She takes the children. Ask for help. Mm -hmm. I ask for help. When I'm going nuts, I ask for help. And you so, think you'd be going nuts even more so if you were home? Oh, I can guarantee you. No. <laughs> you'd be looking at a cashew. <laughs> we're going to talk to you in a little bit some more. So what is the answer for mothers today? And is there just one answer that's right for all moms? We'll look for some answers right after this break. Death of a loved one is a traumatic experience, but it's even worse when you experience problems with the burial. If you feel you've been mistreated by the professionals handling your deceased loved one, please give us a call at 421 Live immediately following today's show. Marianne Stack is in our audience today. Now, Marianne, your children are, are grown at this point. Uh, and you are of a mind that uh, a mother ought to be at home with her kids. But beyond that, how would you like society's view of that stay-at-home mother to change? Well, in my day and age, it was accepted that mother stayed at home. And, and we did stay at home. And I was glad I could stay at home. I don't work now outside of the home. My husband has a job at home that I can do. But I introduce myself as an endangered species <laughs> because people look at me, you know, when, when we're out socially, people look at me and they say, well, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm an endangered species because I, I don't have a job anymore. I do have a job. It'll always be a job. You're always a mom. Mm -hmm. And even though your children are 25 and 26, they still need, you know, need a lot of attention. Does it come down to it being a matter of individual choice? Yes, I think it, yeah. it's an individual choice, but I think that, that our society has to change a little bit. And, and dads can do as well at home if mm. that's the role they want. So Cecile, what would be the most important thing for 
moms who work outside the home and moms who stay home to do or to remember? Well, I think you can't lose your sense of self no matter what you're doing. And that's the real danger because what you communicate to your kids is really how you live your life and what kind of person you are, whether you're earning money all the time or not. I think we should be in segments. Everyone should be able to take care of themselves because we see too many women at the community colleges who are displaced homemakers. But that doesn't mean you have to work all the time, either men or women. But to think through, who am I? What kind of a life do I really want to live? Not, and just try to be immune to all the things that society is telling us. Sabrina with a comment in the audience. Sabrina, go ahead. Qu quick, as we're almost out of time. Well, I agree that with, if the mother is happy, then I think the child is happy too, because I know that my mother has always been with me and taking care of me no matter what, whether she's at home or at work, she, I know that she's always behind me. So she's there for you when you need her. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and that's I think the that's what we need. That's to, the critical thing for right, you. To let the kids know that no matter where mom is, she's always there for you. And we were talking during the break how moms who stay at home are really professionals. They're accountants, they're counselors, you name it. They're doing it. They're doing it all. I do that I when I get home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's job number two. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we certainly want to thank you all. This, this has been a great, lively discussion. We appreciate thank the you. input from all of you. Thanks for being here. We'll come back in just a minute and tell you about tomorrow's Northwest Afternoon.